Hi. Well, it had to happen eventually. DRM or digital rights management has come for paper. If you're familiar with your inkjet printers or your laser toner cartridges with their chips installed that uh, try to force you to buy the manufacturer's inks and the manufacturer's toner cartridges, well, Dymo, who's one of the leading makers of uh, label printers for like the consumer space and also like, you know, small scale business uh, type space as well, they are now putting RFID chips in the paper rolls themselves so that when you buy one of their new printers They've just released a new range of them um, And if you use one of the buy one of these new printers if you're stupid enough to buy one of these new printers You are forced to use Dymo labels You can't just go buy third-party ones and if you've got a huge stock of third-party ones or even old genuine Dymo stock that you had in the past, you can't use it. They will not operate unless you've got the RFID chip installed in them. Oh, unbelievable. Why anyone would want to buy, now buy a Dymo printer is beyond me. Anyway, there's an article here I'll link down below. You can check it out uh, from the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, which I am a card carrying member of. Highly recommended. They do some great work. Um, and how, yeah, Dymo are now putting in DRM into paper and you've seen these before you've probably got one you've probably used it i've got two of these myself one i found in the dumpster by the way are uh, the old 450 turbo model but they've released this new 550 model i think it's been out for a little while uh, now and also the 5 series as well i think there's a 5xl or something but any any of the 500 or 5xl uh series now these all have drm in them digital rights management and well, the reviews are not kind. Let's have a look. And this is just the Australian uh, office supplies uh, place, Office Works. And Dymo are like in crisis mode trying to actually respond to these reviews. Yeah, one star reviews down here. Do not buy this label printer. If you have been using the previous model of this printer with non Dymo brand labels, then prepare for pain and suffering. All your old consumables and genuine and third party are 100% in compatible. Avoid at all costs of being locked into genuine consumables mean Dynamo can up the price and you'll have no other option. This is entirely true. I do not know why anyone in their right mind would buy one of these new Dymo printers. But Dymo are getting desperate. Here's an official Dymo response. Hello, this is Kasia from Dymo Customer Care. We uh, apologize our product has not met your expectations. I would like to inform you that new generation labels have been on the market for over a year, thus superseding the availability of older generation labels. So what they've done, they had uh, prepared this like a long time in advance and they actually seeded the market with new stocks of labels that contain the RFID chips. They seeded the market before they actually released these printers. It was all part of their plan. So they'd hopefully avoid um, <laughs> complaints like this that uh, like, oh, oh, my old Dymo labels don't work. So they waited a year, seeded the market and then released the products so that <laughs> you could hopefully wouldn't get any complaints. Uh-uh, nobody likes this. Trapped into buying Dymo only labels, locks up. Only bought to replace a printer that died suddenly. Got it home and can't use any of my old labels because the new one forces you to use Dymo's new labels. Another response from Dymo. Oh, they're Johnny on the spot. The exclusive use of original Dymo labels with our 550 series of printers emerged from needs of our customers who have been experiencing various issues with third party labels. Oh, the customers have been begging for this. Please, Daddy, lock us in to your genuine labels. We don't want to accidentally buy any third party labels which might have superior adhesion. They might have superior other uh, properties, surface finishes, colors, and all sorts of things that are not available for. Dymo, by the way. Dymo has decided to move our customers away from unfortunate experiences with our devices. Oh, it's for our own benefit, didn't you know? Dymo genuine label recognition sensors help our customers with a better printing and labeling experience. Unless, of course, yeah, as I said, you want like a different type of adhesive, a different type of label, a different color, a different uh, texture, a different, you know, finish or whatever. Um, yeah, no, no more. Got to buy genuine. If you get one of these things, I guarantee it's going to be cheaper to actually throw this in the bin immediately or use it as a doorstop or something because you don't want extra e-waste. For absolutely ditch the thing and go and buy another brand because you're going to be stuck into buying the Dymo labels forever.
here in Australia. Oh, look, bulk buy price for only $37.95. That's only 17 cents per label. So what can you buy these? Excellent, by the way. I've never had an issue with third-party labels ever. I don't know anyone who has an issue with third-party labels ever because that's just bullshit. They just want to make extra money from the labels. They just want to own the label market with their DRM technology. Anyway, what can you buy them for on eBay for the previous versions of the uh, printers? Um, 15 bucks for four rolls. That works out to uh, 1.7 cents per label instead of 17 cents. So that's an order of magnitude cheaper and I get free postage so who is Dymo well they're actually owned by Newell brands um, who I'd never heard of but look who they own they own Rubbermaid Sistema they own Dymo Elmer's Expo whiteboard you know, I use their whiteboard makers Papermate uh, Parker pens Sharpies Exacto Wow they own like everything and everybody and they're just going oh yeah let's just put DRM in the papers because we can own the market. We can just mm, extract, ring out some more revenue from the customer. <laughs> no, what you've actually done is destroyed your business, you dickheads. Nobody in their right mind now is going to buy a Dymo printer when you are forced into buying these consumables at an order of magnitude more cost than what you can just get uh, the cheapies on eBay for. And these work fantastically. So I reckon the best thing to do to fight back against this bullshit is to simply not buy these new Dymo printers. Get the old model if you can, second hand or whatever, if you've still got like software that integrates uh, with the Dymo printer. It will be cheaper to physically throw this in the bin and buy any other brand. Look, once you go through just a couple of rolls, you've already paid for uh, a new third party printer and then the labels are an order of magnitude cheaper than Dymo. So we have to stop this DRM bullshit and that is the best way to do it. The best way is not to hack these things, uh, to bypass them, not to wait until you know third party uh, manufacturers come out with a, a cloned fake RFID chip in them. No, the best thing to do is tell Dymo, no, I'm not gonna use your new pruners. Piss off and then hopefully no other manufacturers are going to try this DRM thing on paper labels. And here's another reason why you don't want to be locked in to a single manufacturer of these labels. Not only is the price and order of magnitude higher, which is enough reason already, but what happens if, I don't know, you know, supply chain breaks down, maybe, and you can't get the genuine stuff? You're like, you're stuck. Um, this would never happen, right? Right? Oh. Canon tells customers to break its printer cartridge DRM due to chip shortage. Oh. Anyway, I've got one of these things. So let's have a look and verify what they're actually doing here. And check out the pissant little roll that you get in the actual uh, brand new printer box. Unbelievable. This is the normal size roll that you'd get. Come on, they're just taking the piss, really. That's just unbelievable. Anyway, you can verify that these things have an RFID tag in them. Um, I'll put a photo up here uh, that somebody else has taken because this is the only roll I've got. That's um, yeah, embedded like at, right at the end of the roll on the cardboard uh, tube thing. And what you can get is just your shoe phone like this with an um, RFID reader in it and you get the NXP RFID uh, reader app. I'll link that one down below as well. It's uh, free and we can put it up and NXP IC detected. We've got all the info. Let's check it out. I've actually uh, got two results. The one on the uh, left hand side here is the original one I got straight out of the box before I printed anything. And then what I did is put the paper in where I didn't print anything. I just advanced the paper by one because I wanted to check if they actually write to the RFID tag, i.e. could you just like buy one of these genuine rolls, unroll it, rip out the RFID tag and just, you know, stick it on a new roll or stick it on the case of uh, the product so that it just always thinks there's a new roll there. Unfortunately, eh, they've thought of that, you can't. They write to this RFID tag and once it gets uh, down, it counts the number of labels on there. It comes pre-configured with the number of labels on the uh, roll. This one tells me that it had, you know, 50 something uh, labels on it. And then once it gets down to zero, eh, you can't use that tag anymore. 
the bastards. So here it is. They actually use an NXP Semiconductor's um, SLI X2 chip, which is uh, this one. And it's got all sorts of, you know, security things out the wazoo. Although people have been talking about this online and it's not the best securities so yeah i think eventually you're going to get somebody on the market selling labels that have uh, clone copies of uh, these rfid chips just like you can get the cloned um, ink cartridges and toner cartridge uh, chips as well but at the moment um they're not available at all anyway it is um password protected some people have uh, figured that out you know it's got yeah it's got all these security uh features and uh, stuff like that in there and there it is there's the block diagram for those playing log at home because we're interested in the technical details so it's got you know anti-collision stuff and access control and e-squared prom and it's got the built-in memory and you just have the antenna in there little rectifier which generates enough power uh, to power the chip there you go little uh, three pin jobby like that and somebody has figured out um, that uh, Dymar are actually using a slightly different chip to what you can buy in production some different variant or something like that I believe uh, which doesn't or which has something enabled or something unenabled or something like that so it's doing password uh, protection stuff here it's got lock status I don't know what these things are i haven't looked in uh, any detail but yeah it's it looks like it's locked or whatever there's a destroy command i wonder if that actually does anything whether they enable that at the end of the roll and they just whoop kill the um, rfid chip because uh, people have confirmed that yeah once these get to zero um you can't use them again and here's the actual uh, memory contents dump this is the actual uh, part number for this role um s0722400 s0722400 label and sure enough that's the actual uh dymo online part number and that's how it's able to auto detect the thing so this is all uh plain text so as i said this is the contents after i change you see the only differences are the time up here and if we go down the bottom, the interesting thing that's changed is this C0 bit here. So this seems to be uh, password protected. This is the register um, that there actually looks like they're storing the count of the label in. So it changes from C6 here to C7 over here. So it's counting upwards. Um, don't know why. That's just how they're implemented in software, whatever. But yeah, every time you advance the label or print a label, it advances yet again so and presumably once in the software um, gets down to zero uh, labels then meh it's rendered useless presume that like there could be like an individual serial number uh per chip i haven't actually looked at the full data sheet and in in depth and figured out tried to figure out how it all works it doesn't matter i don't care i'm just simply going to refuse to buy any new dymo products so i couldn't give a rat's ass but yeah you know, some people might Anyway, let's do a tear down of the real thing and have a look inside because we're not interested in hacking this thing. We're just interested in looking at how all this um, sort of stuff works. Anyway, we have our flash here and it says uh, not in printer. Um, so let's put our roll in. Hasn't detected yet. I've probably got to close the lid. Whack it in there. I guess I've got to press it. It's not detecting. Hello, McFly. Seriously? Unbelievable. Oh, there we go. I just advanced it. A new uh, t label type detected. So I didn't actually send the command, obviously, to read the tag unless I advanced it. Yeah, the S0722400, that is correct. Okay, let's print something. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Dymo does actually suck. And you can see it says there I've got 49 remaining and, well just wasted one um feeding it forward unfortunately all right let's take this heap of crap apart it's uh very similar to the uh 450 turbo there's really no difference except they've added the drm and it's slightly faster whoop de freaking do check it out it's new and improved yes daddy please lock me in with the drm and it only works with authentic dymo labels so they do actually tell you on the box but anyway um yeah if you open it up once again, they do have another warning label in here. Requires authentic Dymo originals. Four screws on the bottom here. Kind of, sort of gets us into this turd. All right, so we've got uh, drive motor here. We've got the print head uh, down the bottom there. Looks like uh, these ribbons go also go off to the uh, print head. So they're like, I don't know, reading something back. I assume that the uh, ribbon nice, nice and beefy for uh, the uh, like power required to drive the print head. Because this is a thermal printer, of course. It requires a significant amount of current to like uh, heat up the individual uh, elements in the thing. And uh, this ribbon just goes off to the uh, front panel. And then 
here's where the evil happens. Right down there. We've got a newbie. So there's our two boards. I'll put uh, high-res photos of these over on my Flickr account. There's an ST ARM processor down there. And, well, you know, not much else, really. And down here, it looks like we might have a serial port. Uh, that looks to be the JTAG. And we've got a switch there. Maybe it does something. Boot mode switch, maybe. You can see the date code down here from uh, 2020. So uh, that was like a year before they actually released this thing. But, you know, it takes a lot of effort to uh, put in the design effort required to screw over the customers. <laughs> You'd be surprised. So I've added two little SMD uh, switches. I found a second footprint over here. And uh, I found these as a uh, serial line transmit receive and uh, ground and I'm tapping off a uh, 3.3 volt uh, line as well see if we can get any like uh, boot up code or anything the bad news unfortunately is that I can't get anything out of this uh, boot serial port at all the boot button here does absolutely nothing the reset button does actually work you press that and you can actually reset a uh, machine put in um, standby but no combination of the boot buttons with the front panel buttons do absolutely anything at all I don't even get a single transition out of the uh, serial uh, port here. So that almost certainly indicates that the STR micro in here has been put into protected mode, which uh, disables all of the uh, debug interfaces and stuff like that, as well as actually uh, protects you getting the code back out of the micros. So the only thing left to probe is the I squared C interface going across here. That'll do the trick. All right, I got the logic analyzer hooked up. There were uh, four lines, two were I squared C, one what looks like an interrupt art line and another line which I didn't bother uh, tracing out, but I hooked it up. So, and here it is. I've just got it uh, free running here. We've got a packet like every, I don't know, count that, every second. There's no paper in there at the moment. So if I press the feed forward button and it does, it doesn't seem to change like anything. So let's put the roll in. Oh, oh, hello, that changed. The top one, which was just the interrupt line, this is now significantly changed. And we've gotten, it looks like we've got an extra packet over here with the roll in. So that's interesting because before what was uh, happening with no paper installed, there was just this interrupt pulse. It, it was in pretty much that exact uh, location. It went high like that, but then it, it just stayed low the rest of the time. But now, it like transitions like 17 milliseconds later there it uh, transitions back high and it um and then it goes low like you know uh, some time after this and we get an extra little packet a little bonus packet here now i've got the i squared c uh, decoding on i'm not sure i've got it absolutely correct yet there seems to be like a little runt pulse in there that's only 500 nanoseconds so i'm not sure what's doing there i did change the sample rate and it didn't seem to make a difference. It's still capturing it. I mean, I've got really short leads, so I don't think there's a signal integrity issue there. So I believe this line here is the interrupt line, uh, but unfortunately it's got a fairly, the chip has a fairly complex interrupt controller in it. So it, we don't like it's fully firmware programmable to do a ton of stuff. So I couldn't tell you what it's actually, um, you know, signifying. You'd have to spend a lot of time to actually play around with this to figure out what's going on here. But of course, in theory, um, you could replace this board with something that just uh, simulated the I squared C signals and uh, the microcontroller, un unless it's like very cleverly signed and this chip does support a uh, secure key interface over the I squared C or something. So, so it might be hard to like just simulate the RFID board because um, a lot of people have uh, talked about this, you know, oh, you just throw an Arduino in there or something and, and you can just output I squared C sing, uh, signals to simulate it. But yeah, I like it's probably possible, but it's going to require, you know, a significant amount of uh, decoding work to figure out what's going on here. Anyway, let's start that going again, and I'm going to advance the paper. Whoa! It just... Oh, no! Whoa! Oh, it's printing. Dymo sucks, Dymo sucks. Um, I, I just wasted... Uh, well, no, I didn't waste two labels. There's two labels well spent. So, um, I think I was playing around with the software before, maybe, and that was a print buffer thing. So, let me do this live, actually. Okay, so we have the paper in. And let's just physically remove the paper. See? 
it definitely changed. Like I told you before, the single inner up there, and there's no pre-packet over here. You see that? Whereas if we put the paper in, there is a pre-packet. So, interesting, huh? So that interrupt is doing that. What's going on there? I don't know. I, I don't see this other line um, down here doing anything, so I don't know what that is. But yeah, it polls every second, and if I just physically put that in there, boom, it, whoa, whoa, we got a lot of interrupts there for a few, but well, for one uh, packet there, and then it goes, then it kicks in, and if I remove it again, boom, it goes like that, and if I stick it in, yeah, yeah, so it's figuring out, it's obviously doing some negotiation there, get, getting all the data, reading the data from the new label, seems fairly consistent. Yeah, that's that's pretty consistent. So that's reading out the initial data from the uh, label, and after that, it's just doing its uh, just periodic things. So, so yeah, you'd have to go in and figure out which are the actual uh, commands, what it's actually doing, and tally that with the data sheet of both the RFID chip and uh, what's going on inside the um, NFC receiver chip as well. I kept saying RFID in this. I don't know. I'm a 125 kilohertz guy. You know, <laughs> NFC, RFID. Eh, same difference. So anyway, we'll leave it at that. I'll link in uh, the EV blog forum down below if you want to discuss this and uh, put your findings and stuff up there. But, you know, eventually you might get um, a Dymo labels that are compatible, but I, they are not available yet. And who knows, maybe no one will bother because nobody's buying this heap of crap. And I don't recommend you buy this heap of crap. As I said, it is cheaper to simply, even if you accidentally bought this one as a replacement for an old one and you realize, you know, you know oh no, I'm stuck buying the bloody Dymo labels in order a magnitude higher price, throw the thing in the bin immediately or use it as a doorstop and then go and buy any other brand. Doesn't matter. I use a Zebra one. They're probably like, they're fairly reasonably expensive, like, you know, professional uh, type ones, but a lot of people like the Brother ones and there's all sorts of other brands. There's tons of them out there. Simply do not buy Dymo anymore. That's it. They're done. They completely killed their business with this DRM shit. And certainly, let them know in the reviews of this shit. Because, well, people need to know this. These, these things should be downvoted to one star everywhere. It's just an absolute joke. Anyway, hope you found that interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up and discuss down below. Catch you next time.